So hello guys, uh, today we are going to see a little example of how to program a microcontroller to make it blink in one of uh, its uh, pins. I'm going to use the PIC C compiler. So here for starters we need to create our project. We are going to go here in new and we are going to click in project wizard. The first thing that the program is going to ask is for a name or for the project. We are going to create a name. I already created here a folder which is called link and I will keep the name uh, just like it is. Here you see a small window of configuration and the first we are, we are just going to touch this main part. In the first part you can select the family of your device. In our case it's pick 16 and then we have to pick 16F and then another thing that we are going to change is here the clock we are going to put a 4 MHz because I have a crystal of 4 MHz that I am going to use in the practice so it fits for me on this project and we go here to create project and everything is set we don't need to change any other thing because this is a really easy or let's say really simple example Basically we have two, two methods to make it blink. One of them is just to put in high one of the pins of the microcontroller uh, on, on any, any port. Or we, can, uh, or we can use a special function which is called toggle. And it's going to make a commutation of the actual value of the pin. So we're going to start with the with the largest it will require four lines and those four lines are the following we're going to write output high so here inside the output high we're going to we have to put the number of pin in this case it's going to be pin let's put a0 and then we can continue we're going to add a delay so it's directly like this delay seconds. Here we can start with a number but I would prefer to put a variable because it's going to be easier to manage if we want to change it later. Uh, the same thing we have to do now but in the other case in the other case is to switch it off. So it's going to be output low and then here we are going to put in a0 again because it's the one corresponding to the one that we switch on. Again we have to put the delay here because otherwise uh, this line is going to, if this line is not present the program which uh, what is going to do is just to jump from here to high again with no delay so it will look like it's always high. So we need to put this delay here. I forgot here to declare my x so we are going to declare by an integer equal to let's say 200. We have to remember that if we just use int here we, we can overpass a value of 255 by definition inside the... In the case that we need another value or, which is higher than 215, 55 sorry, we have to use 16, uh, int 16 so we can go to a higher, higher value like 500 and it will work anyway. So we are set. We are going to compile. It, it seems like we don't have any error. So the next step is going to be to open the um, simulation simulator in order to see if it's going to if it's working properly. So now we go to Proteus, which is my simulator. In this case you can use some others. We are going to just create a here a quick project, a quick schematic capture. And we are going to start adding the devices. In our case, now our device is PIC16F84A. And we are going to add also a LED. Let's put red, red, sorry. And we have many of them, but you have to take care of choosing the one which is animated. So here we go, we put this here, uh, we connect this here, I'm going to put it here, I don't like this, and we need a ground here to connect. 
and let to, to close the circuit. Actually, well, um, technically, we will require here in real life, real application, a uh, resistor. But in this case, it is not need because once our hardware is set, uh, we have to put the program inside the microcontroller. And to do that, we can double click here to open the properties of the microcontroller. Uh, the first thing that I see here that I have to change is the frequency of the clock. And in, you have to remember that we set this for 4 MHz. We have to change because if they are not the same, the, the, the process is not going to run uh, the same speed that we want in the simulation. And the second thing that we have to add here, or modify, is the location of the file, uh, of the compile file. So we click here in the folder, and then we add the second one, which is mind.x. And then we close everything, put OK, and this is the time of testing. We we click here play and as you can see it's kind of blinking every 500 milliseconds so this is the first version now we are going to proceed with the second version the second version is going to be slightly different we are going to just command this uh, so we are going to use this special function which is output underline toggle and inside the parameter is the number of the pin, pin A0, let's put it. And then we have to add a delay again. Basically, it's doing the same thing with that we have done in four lines, but in this case, it's just in two lines. Oh, sorry. X here. Making a mess. So with this configuration, we are set. Uh, this function, output toggle, what it's doing is actually reading the last value of the pin and then... Um, changing it to the um, complement which in this case it may be 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 depending on the previous value so we are ready we are going to compile we don't have any error and then we come back to our simulation here and I'm going to click directly play here there is no need to enter again and put the file here because the program every time that you run the simulation it's reading the file it's not that you just read once and forever so every time we click here it will read the information so there is no need to do it we click here and as you can see it's blinking more or less uh, every 500, 500 milliseconds so let's just come back here and change this file to 200 and then compile and we come back again to our simulation here we click play and you will see that it's a little bit faster so it's com it's a confirmation of uh, the change okay guys this is everything for today I hope you like this video and we are I'm going to bring you some other new videos and especially in this case I'm going to add the video of the real implementation of this hardware so you have a better comprehension of how it works, how's, uh, what's the details of the final hardware that you need to run these applications and of course when we have something in practice it's a little bit better because it's uh, not that much abstract